Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger with Rocket Stock. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover some compositing basics that are essential for anyone working in After Effects. These tips will help you achieve more realistic results when you're adding things into a scene. So let's go ahead and get started with our first scene here. And what I've got here is a shot of a town square. And what I'm trying to do is composite in this billboard. You can see this is a completely CG billboard. What I've done is taken an image of it, and you can see I'll go ahead and turn this on and off here so you can see that. So the idea here is I want to composite this into this shot so that it kind of blends in realistically. And when I say that, really what I think of is I don't want to draw any attention to it where people might see that and say, okay, oh, that's been added in post-production. So it's obviously they're going to see this here, but I want to make it seem as if it's just part of the original scene. And for me, there's really four basic elements that are gonna make something like this compositing the scene look a lot better. And those four things are gonna be color saturation, sharpness, grain, and color tint. So let's get started with color saturation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the billboard, and I wanna come up here to Effect, and I'm gonna to go to Color Correction, and we're gonna apply the effect Lumetri Color. This effect has quite a few different options into it, and I can really substitute it in for numerous other effects I used in the past. And so this is a really good one to start out with. So we're gonna come up here to basic correction. And under basic correction, you're gonna see we have saturation. And typically on CG elements, the colors are really gonna be saturated. Especially when we compare this to real world footage, if you look at the footage here, it's definitely a lot flatter and the saturated colors aren't nearly as saturated as this billboard is. So what I like to do is bring the saturation down. Just kind of take some bite out of the image. You can see right around 80% or so, just even doing that makes this look a lot more flat and more realistic with our normal footage. Next, we can address the sharpness. So if I go ahead and zoom in here, you can see on this CG element, when you render stuff out, it's typically gonna have very sharp edges and be very almost too clean. And if we compare that with the actual footage shot, even though this footage was shot in 4K, there's definitely still a softness to the footage versus this billboard that's really tack sharp. So we wanna take a little bit of that edge off of that. What we can do for that, come over here under Creative, you're gonna see we have a sharpen effect here, but actually we can bring this down into the negative. When I do that, you'll see it applies a subtle blur on top of that layer. So I'm just gonna set this to be like negative 10. Again, just kind of taking the bite out of that. And this can also help if you have any edging or aliasing on your CG model, and you can help alleviate that applying just a little bit of blur, just kind of again matching our original footage. The next thing we wanna do, because this is a still image, it's gonna be kind of lifeless right now. We wanna apply a little bit of film grain to this to match the grain or noise that we might've had on our DSLR for this particular scene. Now this is a daylight scene with a low ISO, so there's not that much grain, but if we just apply just a subtle amount to this billboard, I think it'll go a long ways. So with the billboard selected, I'm gonna come up here to Effect. We're gonna come out here to Noise and Grain, and we're just gonna apply the Noise effect. This is a very quick rendering effect. And if we go ahead and close up the Lumetri Color effect here, you can see noise amount, and I like to leave color noise on. And we're just gonna set this at something like 3%. And I'm gonna zoom in here really close so we can kind of see what's happening. I'm gonna do a quick RAM preview of this. And if we look at this, it may be a little difficult to see with the compression of this tutorial, but we have a little bit of grain. You can see on the windows here, kind of the dark area, and you can see that now being reflected on our billboard. Now it's showing up a little bit more prominent on the billboard here because it's kind of more contrasty right now than the actual scene is. But we can fix that in just a moment. Here I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer just in case you couldn't see this with the compression, but you can see that subtle amount of noise on the billboard, just making that look like it's actually part of the scene. And you can see a little bit here on these windows. Okay, so the final way we're gonna composite this into the shot, we're gonna do a color tint effect. And I call this the poor man's color matcher. And this is probably the most effective of the four effects we're gonna to apply to this to make it again, look as if it's actually naturally in the scene. So what I'm gonna do here, actually, I need to set this up just a little bit though. I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. And this is just gonna be a temporary layer and I'm gonna put this below the billboard. I'm actually gonna turn the billboard off just for the time being. And on that adjustment layer, I want to apply a fast box blur. And I'm gonna select that fast box blur and I'm just gonna apply it to the adjustment layer. And let's go ahead and increase the blur radius. And I'm just gonna check on our P edge pixels. Now this is just so we can kind of blend all the colors together because we're gonna actually color pick a few different spots of this image. And when we apply this blur, this just ensures we don't actually like pick the wrong color that we're not intending because sometimes on the pixel level, it can be difficult to pinpoint a color. So let's go ahead and turn the billboard layer back on. And with the billboard selected, I'm gonna apply the tint effect. It's gonna be located under color correction. I'll just apply that to the billboard. And immediately you're gonna see it's went black and white. So I'm gonna bring the tint amount all the way down to zero. 
So the idea is we're gonna map the black color here to a darker area of our scene and the white color to a lighter color of our actual scene. So I'm gonna select the color picker for the black area and I'm just gonna pick in this kind of darker brown right here. So I went ahead and selected that. And then for the map white too, I'll select the color picker. And I wanna pick a lighter color in my scene for this. So maybe this lighter yellow color or maybe even actually the sky. So I'm gonna select right there on that. So you can see the two colors we have here selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that adjustment layer off. And so now watch what happens to this billboard when I go ahead and increase the amount to tint. As I bring this up, you're gonna see the colors are gonna to start to blend in and match more with the actual color space of the real world shot. You can see I kind of lightened things up before it was a little too contrasty. And what I like to do is usually set this around 15 to 30%. And again, this just helps blend it in with the same colors of our natural scene. And you can see what this looks like if I go ahead and toggle this on and off. You can see what a difference that actually makes, again, blending everything to match this with the same color aesthetic of our original shot. And you can use this color matcher trick on all types of different layers. I wanna show you a quick another example here. I've got this shot of an eagle on an alpha channel. I'm just gonna drag and drop that into the scene. And you can see it's way back there in the distance. I'll just zoom into that so we can take a look. And you can see this eagle, if it's gonna be farther away in the distance, it's not gonna be that contrast. You can see how dark that is. Go ahead and just move through this a little bit. You can see, so if you have mountains or buildings further in the distance, obviously they're gonna be kind of lighter, less saturated in color tone. So I'm actually gonna apply the tint effect to this eagle shot, just apply that. And we can kind of emulate that it's really far back kind of in space. And with this type of situation, what I would do is actually just select two colors of the blue here, because it's not really over any of the other background colors. And I'll just bring the amount of tint all the way down to the bottom. And if I zoom in here, I'm just gonna gradually increase this to where it kind of looks like it's just further back in the distance. And you can see what a difference that tint effect makes on that eagle for that composite. Again, making sure it looks like it's really far back in the distance. Now finally, something else we can look at here. I've got this image of this brush. I'm just gonna bring that in now to the shot. Let's say I was wanting to add this somewhere into the scene, maybe down here in the bottom corner. And obviously right now it's, it's CG and it's tack sharp. It doesn't look realistic. And we want this to be out of focus. And whenever you wanna apply a realistic blur to something, like this brush in this case, we wanna use the camera lens blur. So I'm just gonna type in camera lens blur. And I'm gonna apply that to this brush. And this is a much more realistic blur effect. It's gonna give you more natural camera bokeh. However, I do wanna say it does render a lot slower, so definitely be careful when you're using this effect a lot. Your renders will slow down, but that's kind of the price you pay for a more realistic result. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna increase this blur radius a little bit. As you can see, we get a nice looking blur. And if you want the bokeh to look a little bit nicer on the highlights, just come over here to the highlight section of the effect. Go ahead and increase the gain to 100%. And then for the threshold, I'm just gonna drag this down and you can see, we can set it to a point where we kind of get some nice highlights and these will be kind of a little bit wider colored. And at first these highlights will be less saturated. If you want to go ahead and saturate those up, just increase the saturation here and those will blend a little bit nicer. Now one drawback that I've found when I apply the camera lens blur, sometimes it kind of makes whatever the object is closer to the foreground become a little transparent. And for whatever you're compositing in, this may look nice, but if you want it to look a little bit more filled in, a simple trick you can do is just select whatever layer you've applied and go ahead and hit Control-D or Command-D on a Mac to duplicate it. And you can see when I duplicate that, it kind of fills that back in so it's not quite as transparent. And I think that looks a little more realistic. Finally, just to sell the composite a little bit more, let's go ahead and apply some grain on top of that brush layer as well. And that'll look nice with that kind of out of focus effect. And to do that, we're gonna apply the same noise effect again. And we'll just select that noise effect that's under noise and grain again and apply that to the top copy of that brush. If I zoom in here, we're just gonna increase this to about probably 3%. And that'll just give us a little bit of nice grain that'll match our original shot. Finally, just to wrap this up with another scene, I've got this shot of these barrels and I went ahead and applied the lower saturation, the blur, the grain, and the tint effect to these to match them with this scene. You can see if I go ahead and toggle on and off the tint effect, the difference that it actually makes. And another kind of essential core part of compositing is gonna be using blending modes. And you can see I'm gonna turn on a layer I've got here, which is this fire coming out of this barrel. And this is how the clip actually looks of fires over black. And I wanna go ahead and mention that this fire clip is from the Action Pack Lite from the freebie packs you can download directly from Rocketstock if you wanna go ahead and download that pack and recreate something like this yourself. But I wanna apply this fire to my scene using a blending mode. When you come down here, you can see with the layer, you'll see mode. And if you don't see that, just hit F4 on the keyboard. And with fire and stuff like that, I like to use a screen blending mode. And you'll see how that kind of isolates just the fire. 
and it still kind of pops on the screen there. Another quick shortcut, if you wanna scroll through the blending modes when you select one, just go ahead and select one, then hold shift and push plus or minus at the top of your keyboard, and that'll allow you to quickly scroll through all the different blending modes, just kind of an extra tip there. But again, I'm gonna use a screen blending mode, and this looks pretty good, it looks a little transparent. So another way we can kind of fill this in a little bit more is just by doing the duplicate trick again. So I'm gonna select that fire layer and I'm gonna hit Control D or Command D on a Mac. And that'll duplicate that. And you can see now it looks a lot more vibrant and looks more realistic like fire for this actual scene. And actually another trick we can do if we duplicate that one more time, what I can do on that top duplicate copy, I'm gonna apply a fast box blur to that as well. And what this will allow us to do if I apply this to that top copy, and go ahead and increase the blur radius just a little bit here. You'll see it kind of adds a little bit of a subtle glow around the fire and the flames. We can zoom in here and you can see that. So that's another way you can add a little bit of extra glow on an element like this. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial covering a lot of the basics and kind of core elements of compositing inside of After Effects. Don't forget to check out other tutorials just like this one on Rocket Stock's blog. Again, this has been Charles Jager with Rocket Stock. Thanks for watching.